All right, so I want to start here on the first floor of the police facility outside the administrative offices. And again, remember, this is a 60-plus-year-old building. And so some of the things I'm going to show you, you'll see it's kind of repetitive. It's kind of a common theme. So if you spin around and look at you, behind you, you'll notice just where the water uh, leaks in through the glass. And also we have problems up in the roof. Uh, there's two floors above us. And it just causes a lot of damage. And, of course, looking up at the tile, you'll see we have a lot of, again, from leaks above you. Uh, in the afternoon, there's about a 10 degree noticeable change in temperature when you walk into this portion of the building uh, because the, the AC just doesn't cool it adequately. In between 88 and 90 degrees. Well, that's why I got two pairs, one on the front and one on the back. Just trying to get, to, you know, get through what we can and go about what we can. Offices such as our shift captain's office you know, they're, they're slightly bigger than broom closets. And so, um, and this is actually two people's, this is two offices in here. And so we just have to make do. It wasn't designed to be an office, but we, we, we made it into an office because we needed the space. This is our video evidence room. So this is where a lot of our servers are for all our uh, car video cameras. And we have a lot of clerk that works in here that is responsible for, for making recordings for court purposes and public uh, releasable documents, things like that. But I want, you know, I want to show you her office. You can see where the water uh, leaks in. Again, it's warm in here. It's, it's, it's not comfortable. We only have two functioning urinals um, in the entire police department. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have a place for men to use a restroom. Obviously, we have the, the stalls behind us. Um, Spar looked at replacing the urinals last summer, and it was going to be one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. And we knew at that point that we were really in a place where we needed to start looking at it for another building. So we have problems all the time. You'll notice we put these signs up to kind of tell you where to go. So if this were designed with the police department in mind, there would be a public entrance, and the public would just have to know to get in that door, and we would, you know, you're here for a warrant, you're here for an ABO card, and you speak some investigations. The way this building is set up, you walk in a door, and you have to start looking for signs and talking to people. Hey, I need a police report. Well, do you need an accident report, or do you need a police report? Do you need to make a police report, or have you made one? You need to get a copy of it because that all takes place in different areas of the building. So some of the public services are on this side, some of the public services are on the other side of this building, some are outside at the patrol desk area, and so it's just not really user friendly. Patrol desk, officers, small ones come in and make a report, obviously. Uh, I'm going to show you some good area to show you the tiles we talked about. You can see where the water leaks in and we got some stuff growing. But this room, which has got all the equipment set up, where we have to do the DWI testing. We got the state breathalyzer machine, you got the video cameras, so this is you know where those tests have to take place. But when it rains, so if you picture where you where you're in, in this building, the city court, city marshal's office is right over here. And so we're actually kind of in a basement level. So ground level is above us outside here, and I'll show it to you in a minute. When it rains, water kind of seeps through the ground and pours over the concrete that's in this and then it'll, it'll seep into this area. So when you come down here on a rainy day, We'll have mop heads and towels and things to keep water out of this room. Because again, you can't just vacate this room. If I have a, a DWI to process, this is the room we need to use. And so we got to keep it dry and just kind of do the best we can with it. So we'll talk a little bit about the, the plan once the bond proposal is passed. We would like to build a, or construct the four substations first. And that would get patrol officers out of this building and into one of the four areas in which they're assigned. So closer to the citizens that they serve and actually districts in which they're assigned for their daily patrol duties. We would then be able to demolish the portion of the building that currently um, has our patrol resources and begin to build a new building in that area. Once the new building has been constructed, we would then move our administrative support and investigative personnel into the new building and then demolish this area where we were housed during that construction process and this would then become the parking lot and we would be able to build adequate parking um, for the size of the building we're going to construct. And the new building would be about half the size of the current building because again we're going to substations we're not going to have as many personnel reporting here on a daily basis. Substations are great because they get the officers actually out in the communities they serve. Um, citizens will have uh, better contact, they can go straight to that substation if they want to make a police report it'd be a safe location again if they want to exchange kids with a, a, a ex-spouse or if they want to buy an item online from a person they don't know um, officers will spend less time having to 
um, drive from the current facility to the locations in which they patrol. So you're going to save 20 or 30 minutes each way depending on where you patrol. For example, if I work in Southern Hills and I come here, it's 20 minutes a day before I even get in the district where I can answer a call for service. And then it's another 20 minutes to get back here at the end of my shift. So I'm literally going to save 40 to 45 minutes of an officer's time that they can be patrolling that neighborhood and not driving back and forth to the police station.